One of the things is with bras is that when you wear a bra low and snug, and how a bra should sit on the body, I don't know if you can all see, but my hands are level. The underwire and the top part of the back are level front to back. And a bra is very much like a teeter-totter. So if the back moves up, what does the front have to do? Yeah. Goes down, right. And when women normally get back fat, it's because this bra is creeping up and it's going dunk, 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 dunk. And at about here, doesn't matter how slim a woman is, if you take a bra and cut her right under here, she'll get flubbers. Okay? You can't get away from it. Make the band bigger, the flubbers get worse. But what's really worse is what it does to the front. Because if that back is moving up and staying loose, there's no support for the girls. The girls are being allowed to hang down here. It's putting the wire here. The cups are gaping. The straps are all falling off. When you bring the bra back down here, it gives you a very smooth line. And that put on good clothes, stand up straight and tall, and for most women, it gets rid of that whole back fat issue. But there's three guarantees in life that you need to know about. Death, taxes, and bras will stretch. <laughs> and this goes to some of those old myths you get into about when you buy a bra, you should be on what set of hooks? So what are some of the ones you've heard? Probably you should be on the middle set of hooks or on the tightest set of hooks. Okay. Once upon a time, that was actually truth because bras years and years ago were largely made of cotton and muslin, which had no stretch. And as we know, especially going through hormonal fluctua fluctuations, sometimes we need a little extra stretch. And so this was where if you bought the bra on the second or the third, if you had a fat day, you could let it out. <laughs> that was the reasoning behind it. But now with modern bras, there's so much elastic in them. They're 90% elastic that if you don't start with your bra snug on the first set of hooks as the bra stretches, you have nowhere to tighten. Mm -hmm. So this is why when you buy a brand new bra, you want it to feel snug on the first set of hooks so you have room to tighten as it stretches. But one of the things that's always very deceiving with bras is that when it does stretch, it's kind of funny what happens. Now, how many of us here know what a hot flash is? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I think we're going to work with David Suzuki. We're the next clean energy source. Forget oil, forget coal. Yeah. Hot flash and women. That's where it's at. <laughs> but we naturally run at 100 degrees of heat. Naturally. And sometimes we get even warmer. And that stretches the elastic very quickly. So when this back stretches, just with normal movement, it'll start to creep up a bit. But what's funny though, guess what's the first thing that goes? The shoulder strap comes off. So what do women think? Okay, I'm going to show that shoulder strap. I'm going to tighten them up and whee, up we go in the back. <laughs> and pretty soon when you're doing that, that's pushing in the wires. It's feeling tight. You're getting poked here. It's the opposite of what we need to do to adjust a bra. We really don't tighten our shoulder straps. What we do is we pull this down and we tighten here to get everything lifting in the front again. Most common adjustment mistake that women make. If you go into a lot of big box stores or Lacenza and stuff, you see a lot of these types of bras. Kind of formed cup, you know, um, feel free these, if, to feel them, pass them around. If you feel and squeeze the foam, they're quite rigid, very firm, that kind of thing. Oh yes. <laughs> and we see those largely everywhere because someone figured out along the way, if I take a sheet of foam and I put it over mold and I use heat to set it, we can produce a lot of these bras super cheap and super fast. <laughs> Here's the challenge though. If your breast was not the mold they used to make that bra, the chances of getting a good firm fit and a supportive fit that fits your body can be kind of slim to none.
The other challenge with those bras is that they're designed for us to be standing on the red carpet all day. You know, standing up straight and tall, never moving, perfect posture. How many of us do that? Yeah, I don't think so. Not in my world. And so, and when they move on the body, they have to move as a unified piece. There's no flexibility for alternate movements. And particularly with formed cut bras and that hard foam, if you move like this, they have a choice. They can either gape and bubble or they can cut. There's nowhere in between. Then we get into a technology like this, and this is really neat. This is spacer, and if you squeeze it, it feels kind of cushy. And what it is is two layers of foam, not two layers of foam, two layers of fabric that are quilted together, and so it wicks, breathes, and dries. You still get a very smooth look. However, it tends to mold more to your body, and it doesn't tend to be as hot as the foam can be. But once again, both of these structures are set using heat to set them. So over time, what do you think our hot body does to them? Reshapes. It reshapes them. <laughs> and it starts breaking down that molded shape. And one of the little keys we always look for in proportioning a woman is we want the breast lifted about halfway between shoulder and elbow. That's where we can hold our posture. Also, I draw an invisible line inside a woman's shoulder line. And I don't want to go too wide and round beyond that line because humans see width, we don't see depth. If I make you wider and rounder here, well, you look wider and rounder. If I get you up a little bit, that's what gives us our waist and helps us proportion nicely in clothing. So sometimes with these shapes is you get that low, wide and round look. In order to get a little more lift, Seamed cups are, have always been the better technology for that. Now, what's interesting is these are mostly by my premier supplier, Prima Donna. This bra here has 50 pieces in it. Even in a factory setting, it still takes anywhere from five to six hours to make. But we call her the iron horse of the collection because I see it come back after years of wearing, still looking great, holding firm, you know, doing well. You'll never believe what is one of the firmest, longest living fabrics in bra use. Lace. An all lace cup, when you take lace and tool and you put them together, they become very firm. They don't stretch. Plus they're air conditioned. <laughs> and a seamed lace cup will mold to a woman's body. What a concept. Clothes that fit you instead of you trying to fit clothes. And they will hold their shape generally longer than most other fabrics and particularly, particularly more than molded cups. The other thing that we get with lace and different cut shapes is we get different shaping that works under different outfits. And this is where bras and shoes have a lot in common. We have a little saying in the shop, women need, we need quality in three places, beds, bras and shoes. That's where we spend all our time. <laughs> the rest is debatable. But like shoes, if you buy three pairs of running shoes, what happens when you go to dress up and wear your cocktail dress? <laughs> now, how well do those running shoes go with that cocktail dress? Let's be honest. Um, you know, sometimes you need a nice pair of pumps. Sometimes you need a great pair of flats, a pair of stilettos. Now, I know for those of you who have shoe fetishes, you're thinking, oh my God, I need that many bras. <laughs> no. But it's why when you have your bras, and you usually want two or three good bras in your collection, you want them to be slightly different shapes or silhouettes to work under different outfits. You know, have a great t-shirt bra, but then have a bra that lifts you a little more and pulls you in for, say, tailored garments. That's why you want some different shapes and styles.